Hi, here is Wednesday's math session. Uh, this is the final lesson on this particular unit of maths and tomorrow we'll be looking at something a little bit different. Okay, so we'll start off. I'll get the PowerPoint up. Here is today's starter. So I'm thinking that you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil for this. So it says, can you put the digits one to nine um, in a square so that every row, column and diagonal add to 15. Now you can only use each of the digits once. Okay, so you couldn't put one here and one here. You need it to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but in any order. And they need to add, so each row needs to add up to 15. Each column needs to add up to 15. And all the diagonals so diagonals are like this, also need to add to 15. Here's an example that I did. Okay, this doesn't work because when I do 1 add 2, add 1 add 9 add 2, I get 12 and I wanted 15. Okay, so you might find this, this is a bit of trial and error and you might spot a few patterns possibly as you're going. So this could take a little bit of time. But I would like you to persevere and try and come up with a solution. And I've heard that there are more... There's, there is more than one solution. So if you have any spare time, if you find a solution, you can see, you could see if you can find another solution that will really impress me. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, I'm just going to reveal the solution, so please pause it if you haven't finished. Here's one solution, okay? I did say earlier, that there is more than one solution. So your solution might look different to this. So please share it with me. You can see that each of the rows adds up to 15, the columns add up to 15, and the diagonals also make 15. So it works. And I believe that this can take quite a while to do. I wonder if you notice any patterns or anything that helped you to get there. Now, yesterday we went over the other efficient method, I wonder if you've just paused the video and just remember what that efficient method was. You could read the information at the side if you want a bit of a recap, but hopefully you'll remember what we talked about yesterday. Okay, so what we were doing yesterday was we were looking at the question and we were thinking, do I need to spend my time turning it into an equivalent multiplication? So do I need to do... 12 fifteenths multiplied by one third or can I do it the slightly quick the unitizing way okay so remember if this if this numerator is a multiple of the divisor then we can just do 12 divided by 3 and we don't need to do the multiplication so your first task is for you to Write down this table on your piece of paper, okay? So numerator is a multiple of the divisor, so that means you can do it the sort of quicker way. Or numerator is not a multiple of the divisor. So this column will be where you do the equivalent multiplications. And this column is where you can do it just straight away, really, in your head. So if you'd like to see one example of each one example for each column and keep watching but if you feel quite confident please pause the video and start straight away okay i'm now going to show you one one calculation in each of these boxes just so you understand what i mean okay so i chose to put 12 15 divided by 3 here and i put my answer as well so I did 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 fifteenths. I chose to put this one, 54 over 56 divided by 7, in this box because 54 isn't a multiple of 7. So I did 54 over 56 multiplied by 1 seventh. Okay, and I did 54 times 1 is 54, easy. And then 56 times 7 I just wanted to make sure I was getting it right, so I just did a little bit of workings down here. So my answer is 54 over 392. 
and I know that can be simplified. So maybe someone can send me a solution afterwards to show you what the simplified answer would be. Now, if you haven't already, pause the video and complete the rest yourself, please. Okay, go through the answers. So 12 fifteenths divided by 5 should go over here. Okay, you should have done 12 fifteenths multiplied by 1 fifth. Okay, and you should have got 12 over 75. Okay, this one, 6 sevenths divided by 3 should go here. And you should have got the answer 2 sevenths, because 6 divided by 3 is just 2. This one, 6 sevenths divided by 4 should go down here. 6 sevenths multiplied by 1 quarter would be 6 over 28. This one, 7 eighteenths divided by 2 would go over here. 7 eighteenths multiplied by a half would be 7 36. This one would go here. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so it would be 2 elevenths. This one would go over here. 56 divided by 7, oh no, sorry, this one would go over here. What am I saying? This one would go over here because 56 divided by 7 is 8. So it would be 8 over 65. Okay, and we've already done the other one as well. So let me know how you got on afterwards. Let's carry on. So I just really want you to practice a few more of these. It's a really important skill to have. And once you're confident, it's often fairly easy once you know the rule. So just as our final day on this, I would really like you to just spend some time now just practicing answering these questions and picking the best method, the most efficient method each time. So please pause the video now and write down your answers. Okay, I'm now going to reveal the answers, so if you haven't finished, please pause. Okay, all the ones where I've circled yellow, you can see that I was able to do the slightly quicker version, okay, because the numerator was a multiple of the divisor. So I'm not going to read them all out, but you can see that the yellow fractions are all correct. Those are the correct answers, so you can mark your work. The pink answers are also correct because they're equivalent. Okay, I've simplified 3 fifteenths by doing 3 divided by 3 and 15 divided by 3. So either of these answers are fine. On the other ones, the blue ones, oh, I've missed one over here, okay, these are the correct answers and you can see that I had to turn these into multiplications because 5 isn't a multiple of 4, so I did 5 ninths multiplied by a quarter, okay, this one over here, we would have done 8 ninths multiplied by 1 third and that would be 8 over 27. Okay, please let me know how you got on. I hope you're confident at this. And uh, this is the final problem for today. So this is the challenge. And then tomorrow we're moving on to something else. So it says here, what numbers could go in the empty boxes to make the statement true? Find all the possible answers. So you need to really think about this yellow rule and the blue rule. That will help you, okay? What numbers could go here to make it work? We had one like this the other day and it seemed more complicated when we didn't know the other rule, but I think now we know the new rule, this question is, is easier. So pause the video and have a think, try and find all the answers. Okay, I'm now going to reveal some of the solutions. So pause if you've not finished. I just used the unitising method, so I just thought, right, in this box here, it's got to be multiples of 7, okay, because I can just do that. I don't need to turn it into a multiplication sentence, 
So if I have 7 there, 1 here. If 14 was there, then 2 would be here. And so on. So these are the pairs of solutions. I wonder how many of those you found. I haven't written them all down. So hopefully you've got more solutions than I have. If over here you can see I turned it into a multiplication. Look how inefficient, inefficient this method is. It took me longer. So you knowing the other method was really useful here. I wonder how many of you remember that method. So please send me your work. I really want to see it and look forward to seeing you back tomorrow for something else. Thanks for joining in. Bye.